Hello everyone, my name is The Writing Spartan, welcome to Halo Spotlight. Today we're doing a and a and I'm joined by Bronson. Welcome Bronson. Hey, thank you, nice to be here, excited. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on. Um, we've got a, a lot of questions for you today, so hopefully uh, hopefully we're, we're going to get some awesome answers as well. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> um, so I'll just jump right into uh jump right into the first question which is could you give us a bit of background on what super game craft is and who is involved with it yeah absolutely so super game craft uh was a website slash well is a website slash formerly a website is currently a youtube channel and twitch uh started way back uh a long time ago with a friend of mine in a game of halo 3 we wanted to make awesome. videos. Uh, we yeah, like this was like '08. It was like summer '08, where you know we're sitting. I was like sitting in my basement. Uh, back in the know, day. <laughs> yeah, way back when uh, playing Halo Three with a friend of mine who had recently just moved across the country, mm-hmm. and we were and we were and we were really into uh, Giant Bomb, their podcast, their stuff, and we we're oh, like, yeah, and we were like, oh, dude, we should do we should do a podcast uh and we should we should make videos and we should do writing mm-hmm. and um you know we went on to like pursue a careers in game journalism and we worked for this big website for a while mm-hmm. um and you know we and then uh that folded uh like a couple of years ago mm-hmm. and then we decided we wanted to start something fresh or we wanted to start you know we should and we were like oh we should go work on super game craft start that up again re- reboot it yeah um and you know we, we it's taken a while but we've kind of fa- found our niche which is like okay like informative insightful news podcast and mm-hmm. then uh what i am calling let's streams okay which are let's plays but we stream them yeah yeah uh and then occasional other and then co- content with our community where we play games with our community mm-hmm. and uh the 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 one that made me find you guys and the content that you produce that i've from other creators I've really enjoyed that I've seen so far. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and uh, maybe you want to contact you guys is we're doing, we're, you know, we're obviously big Halo fans. I mean, our, our work started in a Halo game. Mm-hmm. Uh, we decided, oh, we're going to let's play through all the Halo games before Halo Infinite comes out or let's yeah. stream. And that's, yeah, and that's what we're doing right now along with our podcast. Oh, uh, yeah. That's, I mean, it, it's cool that it's uh, it's kind of come such a such a long way, really. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of had quite the journey uh, of getting to where it is. And it's uh, it, it's cool that, you know, Halo, <laughs> Halo Health does connect as well. Um, so Halo's still doing, still doing wonders 14 years on <laughs> from Halo 3 up until now. So helping people connect. So that's awesome. Um, I can honest I can honestly say I have met some of my I have literally met one of my best friends through Halo. Actually two of them. Mm-hmm. And uh I had one friend who I met who was originally lived really far away with me, and we ended up going on vacation to Seattle together. Uh oh, awesome. to, to go to the first Halo Fest in twenty eleven. Oh, so so <laughs> um so Halo Halo, uh while I love its story and its single player uh it definitely has been a game that has made me branch out and get a lot of connections be it is be it on the Rouge Petite forums be it on you know just playing the multiplayer you know or even this you know yeah i can definitely relate to that one most of my closest friendships are if not directly from halo it's because of people that i know through people I've met through Halo, so it's uh, yeah, Halo works wonders for for linking people together. It's uh, it's great that it's it's still happening throughout you know twenty years. It's still it's still going. So it's right. open. Like it turns twenty this year. That's crazy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's getting old. We're getting old. <laughs> oh, dude, no. When my hair grows out, it's all gray now, and I'm like, I'm like, you are not supposed to be gray at thirty. <laughs> The joys uh, of the joys of uh, aging through your twenties and getting to your late twenties, and you're like, "Oh no, <laughs> feels good." No, no, my roommate, she just turned, uh, she just turned uh, twenty eight, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm like, "You're getting close to 30. and she's every time I mention it, she just like you can see her die a little on the inside. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I can relate to. That. I'm slowly edging my way to thirty as well. So, 
<laughs> so, um, yeah, no, I can definitely relate on, on that feeling. But, you know, Halo keeps me feeling young, I guess. <laughs> uh, uh, so moving back on to Halo anyways, because <laughs> as, as you've probably you've probably listened to the other Q&As, tangents are a big thing on these Q&As. We love tangents. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are a master of those on the podcast. So you... You don't you don't know what demon you might have just invited. <laughs> oh no, no, tangents are like if there isn't at least one in, in the Q and I, I haven't done the Q and Q and A right. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, but I will move back onto the questions now, um, which is going back to Halo. We've mm. talked about um, you doing the you know all, all the Halo games, uh, the the let streams as you called them. How did the idea of of doing all the Halo games on Legendary come about for the stream? <laughs> Um, so we actually did the first two on Heroic. Mm-hmm. We probably could have done Halo 1 on Legendary. We blew through it real fast. Halo 2, uh, no way. Halo 2 is <laughs> the easiest one, right? <laughs> no, Halo 2 is the hardest by far. Oh my god, by the end of Halo 2 on Heroic, we were just both done. <laughs> it didn't help that we had some technical problems with the MCC, uh, but like, but like it bugged out a couple of times on us. Mm-hmm. Um, we actually technically one level we finished, but the game didn't consider it finished. So we we actually are missing one achievement for oh, really? Halo Two. Yeah, oh. um, we're gonna go back and do it at the end of everything. But mm-hmm. for now, we're just like, okay, dude, we we have we're on a deadline. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get through all these before Halo Infinite's out. Um, I mean, the, the pace you're going, it's uh, you, you know, quite a fast pace though. Yeah, I'm actually kind of surprised for for a show that's two to two and a half hours every week that is usually filled with technical problems because we're d- disconnecting in and out or someone's mm-hmm. having internet problems. The joys of uh, MCC as well. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, like we're 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 at a real clip. It certainly helps that um, I used to do local tournaments in MLG. Mm-hmm. Um and do pretty well here. And then uh, one of the people that we brought in for the Let's Play is an old time Halo friend of mine named Johnny, mm-hmm. who uh, was MLG. Like he competed at like the the big level, the big That's boy awesome. level. So he's he's re- you know he's really good at the game. And then all four of us have been playing it for you know forever. So it's like you know. And then in the case of uh, in the case of Halo One through Reach, like those games are all burned into our minds. <laughs> so I was about to say, it's a bit strange when you go back to these older games. Just how much muscle memory there actually is, dude. No, like Halo One in particular, because that's the campaign I played the most. I was like, okay, we're gonna go here and do this. We're gonna go here, here, here. Okay, around that corner, that's gonna spawn. Okay, once we get up the hill, two hunters are gonna go and switch to your pistol. Like, just how much in my mind did Halo 1 is just, like, seared in there. Um, but yeah, so back to how we came up with the idea, though. So, uh, we were kind of looking for something to fill our Wednesday uh, streaming schedule slot. Because mm-hmm. what we were doing was a show uh, called Your Next Favorite Game. Right. Which was a show where we would go on Game Pass... Pick mm-hmm. a game to play for the week and come back and tell you if it was any good or not. Mm-hmm. But we realized doing that show is really hard because you have to play through a full video game in a week yeah, and schedule the time for that and then come back with notes and try and be really coherent on mm-hmm. a one to two hour show. And we were yeah. like, well, you know, let's do, you know, we do a let's play. And like, we're like, well, we always want to go through the Halo games again. And, you know, I, we have people in, in our, uh, in our uh, our Discord community, who play Halo multiplayer with us when we do community nights, we'd probably be able to get two of them in real mm-hmm. quick. And we said, "Hey, we're doing the Halo games," and like uh, a good chunk of our community was elated; they were stoked. Uh, mm-hmm. We were we were we were stoked. Like we boot like uh, I feel like every week of that that show is like old is like old man hours <laughs> for for mm-hmm. like. Like, because it's just like four people all reminiscing about Halo for two and a half hours. It's just the the, the nostalgia show. (laughs) Yeah, like it's just like, hey, do you want to hear two dudes just like, like, have pure Halo nostalgia for two hours straight? (laughs) Here you go. Occasionally, go off on a random tangent about something. Um, Our streams, our streams go. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, like, 
you know, like we'll, like we'll talk about like we, like we talked about the launch of Halo Two and like the launch of Halo Three and like we'll go and talk about Red versus Blue and what that what they've been up to or you know what we think they're doing with Infinite and you know like Xbox as a platform and how Xbox is so tied to Halo and you know all this stuff and uh, one thing that we actually talked about uh, when we were doing Halo Three was like man if Halo Infinite like Halo Infinite's multiplayer is free to play. Like if that if that ends up being like the multiplayer, like that's gonna be such a win for Microsoft. Oh my god! Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um. So yeah, that's kind of where it came from, and like we're loving, we're having a great time. Um. You know, we're you know, like I said, we're going. Reach is starting this Wednesday, as oh, of recording. Nice. We're yeah. So uh, that'd be the nineteenth. So like Wednesday the nineteenth, we're popping into Halo Reach. Oh, it will have already started by the time this comes out, then. <laughs> okay, yeah, absolutely. But you, you know that that'll be on the Twitch vods. That'll be in the YouTube. Uh, you know, I, I tag you guys whenever we post something, so I'm sure you guys. Will... Yep, I I see it and I retweet it. So <laughs> yeah, so there you go. I do all the social uh, stuff as well, so <laughs> I so, see everything. <laughs> so yeah, like uh, so yeah, and and we're loving it too. Like mm-hmm. like the entire time, we're just like these games are so good. Um, and like we got we got plans for uh, for other like we're trying to plan other Halo content because yeah. this is obviously drawing Halo fans to our our Twitch our YouTube etc. Um, and and we just you know we like Halo like we're you know we're happy to do general games coverage. I love video games as a whole. I'm playing the Mass Effect trilogy. I'm re going through the Mass Effect trilogy in my free time right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm a big World of Warcraft head, Burning Crusades right around the corner, but like mm-hmm. I am more than happy to make videos and talk about Halo for hours each week. Relatable. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely uh it's it's definitely one of those one of those games that, you know, it 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 is just passion. It's just just pure love for the for the Halo franchise and I think I think with streaming, I know you you mentioned about you know the whole Games Pass thing that you you tried to do and playing the game in a week and stuff. But you got you got to love the games you're playing, right? Especially mm-hmm. if you're streaming a lot. I feel like uh, it it just makes it so much easier if if you're just playing stuff you enjoy. Uh, um, uh, abs- absolutely, uh, absolutely, and I, and I think part of the passion for Halo and the Halo fans is like back in the day, Bungie would just like stoked to that in their community so much mm-hmm. that that like it really created a fire that like is probably never going to go away um no, definitely you know. not. yeah um, yeah that's a it's, they made a lasting impression for sure and you know they really brought together the community to be as passionate as as what they are and that's something that for better or for worse, is, is still a thing in uh, yeah. 2021. So, yep, you get them, uh, you get them real angry people. As I saw, <laughs> like I, I saw that Halo Five post on Twitter that I commented on like a week ago or so with you guys. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. I'm like, I, and I got some controversial Halo opinions, I'm sure. But hey, like, I'm, I'm, I'm the guy who doesn't like Halo Three, so. <laughs> That is a controversial I, I opinion. Do controver- well, to be fair, to say I don't like it would be a stretch. It's just my least favorite. So, uh, trust okay. me, I know about controversial <laughs> uh, uh No, I've come out on the podcast multiple times and said Halo 5's competitive multiplayer is the best since 3. And, like, everyone just is like, like, just, you could just hear the wind to get sucked out of the room. I feel like there's, a, there's quite an overwhelming amount of people that actually do have that thought process though but most mm-hmm. people just are scared to share it because of the the, the you know the whiplash they get because i mean like you mentioned you know you've, you've saw stuff i've posted on twitter as well mm-hmm. I, i'm not afraid to just say how i feel about halo but like i them new screenshots that came out with halo infinite and i said mm-hmm. oh you know i would have liked to see more free for free design uh free for free industries like own uh, designs there mm-hmm. rather than uh, you know the the kind of spiritual reboot classic art style that they've gone with and whew, that was a rough two days riot riot yeah, in the it, streets it was that's what it felt like i had to kind of just uh not go on twitter for two days that's how extreme it was um, um yeah and i'm just like <laughs> like i i don't love the 343 art but i can see why people would like it like it's and that's fine like People like need to chill. Like at the end of the day, know. though, whatever Halo Infinite is, whether we love it or we hate it, 
we're all still going to play it anyway. <laughs> like, but, like even, even, we're trying to kid, <laughs> you know, even if we hate I, it, we're still going to play it. <laughs> like, I look back at Halo 5, right? And, like, I still play Halo 5 every now and then. And, like, the only part about that game that's really bad is, like, its story is just shit. It is, it yeah. is so, it is just, like, w- I, 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 you... I... Go ahead, go ahead, sorry. I love that competitive multiplayer. I think Warzone can be a lot of fun at times. I wish it were harder. Mm-hmm. But like like that's you know and then even some of the campaign missions are a lot of fun. It's just yeah. that the actual story behind it is not great. And if you're playing that game on a Series X or a 1X, it looks great. Mm-hmm. It looks great when it's super smooth. <laughs> and not if you're so playing much... it on an original Xbox One like me. Um, play Wars and Firefight. Good luck. <laughs> I review. So I got a review copy of that game like two weeks early back in the day. That was when I was still nice. doing uh, press for it. And mm-hmm. um, uh, and what I remember is, uh, like, I didn't have that many problems. Out, like, though, I did notice on certain multiplayer maps, like it would have to load in shadows afterwards, and like. It yeah. would just the frame rate would just like go from like solid sixty to like twenty eight, you know, like it was just yeah. so rough. Um, I was actually one of the people that called that the MCC was going to be a mess because I I, uh, I kept it kind of quiet because I got a review copy of that one, yeah, and stuff just didn't seem right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I got that that game came out in like November tenth. And we got it like the second to last week of October. Blow through the campaigns, didn't have any issues. I was lucky, I guess. I don't know what happened. But I blew through all those campaigns. And I, go, I write the single player and presentation points in the review. And then I, they, they, ha- they have the multiplayer patch for reviewers and internal people at Microsoft go live. And they're like, okay, 7 p.m. Wednesday, go live. You start matchmaking. And I try to matchmake. And it doesn't work for like two hours. And I'm like, Okay, you know, this has happened before with review codes. Like, I reviewed the Resistance games, and like, there's like maybe a couple hundred people play- that have a copy of this, so maybe they're just having issues. Yeah, and they and then like I get an email back from them, be like, like, uh, yes, we're aware of these issues. We're gonna fix them. They put a patch out for the reviewers. Doesn't do anything. Uh, I mean, some, and- some of the problems were just insane, though at launch, oh. like. Oh yeah, no, no, uh, and then like they say, uh, there's gonna be a patch on day one, but we obviously want you guys to be able to review the multiplayer. So three four three scheduled appointments to play with other press in custom games. Oh, that's funny. Um, so like I ended up in like a room with like IGN and like a couple other people, different outlets, mm-hmm. um, and we. We go ahead and we I play the matches and I'm like, well, that was super fun and those matches ran great in custom games, but I can't review this without going into matchmaking. I'm sorry, I'm not. It's not yeah. happening. So like, and I and I tell my boss at the time that like we're not gonna have a review on embargo, and he's like, why not? And I explain it to him, and he's like, uh, okay, um, and that's fine, I guess. And like I and I and I end up waiting for like the next patch two weeks later, and it was still broken. And I said, if you just want to play through these games in single player, this package is awesome. But this multiplayer literally is unplayable. So wait, or you know, that's it. Uh, but like, I, and like, I knew something was wrong. Like, it was like, okay. And not like uh, that launch is still having knock-on effects now. Like, yeah, you, I, 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 br- I brought it up a few times on Twitter about. You know what? What kind of content could we have had for Halo Five if MCC worked at launch? Because all the fixes and all the attention that MCC is getting right now could have been given to Halo Five instead. Right, but like they they have a separate team, and it's like you know, are they going to yeah. are they going to go out and hire that whole second team just to add more work to Halo Five, and, uh, or not Halo Five, um, Halo Infinite? Well, Halo Five and Halo Infinite. I mean, you know, Halo like, Five still has some really bad issues. That just uh, just not cared about, <laughs> which is a I mean, shame. Yeah, yeah like I, I actually really want a PC port of that game really badly, and I'm I know I'm never gonna get it. Um, yeah, I, I cry so. inside a little bit when I think that Halo Five is gonna be the only game not on PC. 
Yeah, it's a bummer. Like, and like we've actually had problems like scheduling for our let's play with it because mm-hmm. our two people who we've been let's playing with for the rest of like the Halo games don't yeah. own Xboxes. Ah, so we're literally being like, "Hey, does anybody want to stay up really late on Wednesdays and play Halo?" But you have to own an Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, uh, it's just like, and like most of our community just looks at us like we're crazy people. Um, there is a market so... there for it as well, and I've always said, you know, from even when when Halo Five first released, it has it had such a strong potential for the FPS market on PC. It's a game that you know. If they took, if they sorted out the aim assist stuff, mm-hmm. then it would be ideal for I think the FPS PC market. Oh, to be honest. it feels so good. Other yeah. than t- other than Titanfall two, I can't think of a shooter that feels better. Mm-hmm. Like I, like I, for I competitive multiplayer, like it feels so good. I've I I still occasionally go in and get my rank for the season. Like I play my ten placement matches and I stop. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, like and. Like just like last week, I, I did my ten matches, and I, you know, and I was just like, this feels really good, you know, yeah. and, and the you know just like you know just the boost, like when you when you boost out of a like a sniper shot or you like, you know, you do crazy shit with it, like it, yeah, I, 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 I will always stand by. I think Halo Halo Five's multiplayer just is real good. I uh, hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, yeah, so. But yeah, like, like it's uh, you know we're 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 up to reach uh, as there is no question when and uh, you know like Halo Reach is um, that's a game that I think like a lot of people overlook for whatever reason. I think like, a lot of people just kind of look down on it a bit because you know initially there was kind of oh it, it you know it makes the book less relevant or whatever you know the the kind of the details that people got angry at when the campaign came out, um, and Bloom, Bloom definitely didn't help the multiplayer. I don't even think Bloom. Blo- I don't even think Bloom was that big of a deal. Like when I go back and play it now, but go on. Sorry. No, I was just gonna say. I, I think when like Free for Free Industries got that got the handle on Reach and and brought out the you know the title update stuff, I think they really they took Reach from being a. a an acceptable Halo game to being like a good Halo game. That's yeah, and my, like that's just my view on it. And it's like the by far the biggest Halo with the most like at the time, and like um, it still might be actually when I sit and think about it. Besides MCC, you know, having all of them in it, but like the biggest individual Halo. Um, I mean, I was still playing Reach up until Halo Five came out because I like got to max rank on Halo Four in like two weeks, and then it was like, okay, well, I prefer playing Halo Reach so. I don't like Halo Four's multiplayer. They 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 made it play too much like COD. Mm. I I think that it doesn't feel like Halo anymore. Um, There's some game but, modes in there that like strip back some of the you know the loadout options and all that jazz. You know, mm. there's there's some. The way I look at it is like I judge Halo Reach's multiplayer based on the title update playlists. Mm-hmm. So. If I'd have to do the same with Halo Four and judge it by the um, yeah, because Halo Four had the Infinity Slayer variants and the and mm-hmm. the like hardcore variants. The hardcore variants are why I usually judge Halo Four's multiplayer on because that just felt more like <sighs> Halo, I guess. E- without even other, other bits, I guess. Like I don't know, the shooting just doesn't feel the same. You know, like that stuff does get make it better. But like, but before that stuff was added, though, it's just like loadouts and freaking, you know, call, you know, ordnance drops and like ordnance drops completely ruin like the whole concept of map control. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just uh, you know, like just it's like that. And then like when you wind it back, yes, it's a lot better. Like when you roll that stuff back to you know, like you said, infinity or hardcore. Um, but even then, it just doesn't feel right to me. I guess like mm-hmm. it, it, like the way movement and everything works, which is weird because that's the engine they use for Halo Two Anniversary's multiplayer, which is probably my favorite. Um, my least favorite. Oh, dude, I love it. Ah, oh, like ah, oh, hit scan battle rifles coming back. That was a treat. That was like oh, mm. um. But I also played twenty five, you know, like 
twenty five hundred matches of uh, Halo Two or no? Sorry, I played some absurd amount of Halo Two when I went and looked at my stats on before Bungie.net closed down, and like it was, it was enough to where like where like Halo Two even now, uh, even with my old man reflexes and not really current on it, I still do fairly well in its multiplayer. <laughs> Yeah, Halo 2 is one of those strange Halo games where everyone kind of agrees that it's competitive, but some people just are just naturally overwhelmingly good at Halo 2. And I I don't see that in any of the other Halo games, really. Because a it's, lot of the time, you got to learn the skill in other Halo it, games. But it's cause, Well, it's because those dudes have had practice forever, and those dudes, like... Um... Halo 2 was, like, the one where, like, people had, like, I feel like it had the highest competitive ceiling, Mm -hmm. um, but also the highest competitive, like, floor. Like, I feel like if you're new to Halo 2 and you play it, like, you just get annihilated. Yeah, if you're playing someone who even moderately knows what they're doing. I think that's one of Uh, the reasons Halo 3 is also so popular. Because it had a lower entry level skill. Yeah, yeah, yes. Like, uh, like, and and that was great for the game. Um, I know a bunch of friends who were real Halo Two MLG guys who just like were immediately upset that like oh, this is so much more accessible. And I'm like, I'm sorry they took away your button combos. Um, I, mean, I mean, ironically, a lot of the stuff that made Halo Two like as sweaty as it was was not intentional anyway. So, <laughs> um, Halo Two does still have the best maps, though. I will, I will always, I will, I will die on that hill forever. Is that it still has the best multiplayer maps of the entire franchise? Um, Who doesn't love so, Zanzibar? Right? Yeah. Wait, what? Zanzibar. Well, that's the Halo Three variant. The- uh, Halo Three is the variant of Zanzibar's oh, last resort. Oh, okay, There's... so it's Zanzibar, it is Zanzibar. The Halo. But yeah, you look at that list. It's Zanzibar. Uh, you know, you got Zanzibar. You got Lockout. You got uh, like uh, you know, Halo Three had some good maps. The Pit's a good map. Uh, no glad you know, you the Pit's a good map. The, the uh, <laughs> uh, I do like Gar- the problem with Guardian is it's like literally like low rent Lockout. Like yeah. it's it's like it's like ah oh, we tried to make lockout again but it's not as good, um and then, uh you know Halo Three had standoff which I think is a good map, uh you know I think that um, Rat's Nest is pretty solid, uh you know Valh- Valhalla of course is good, um, but they they just don't the like the Halo Two maps just there's so many good ones man. And then, like, Halo Reach, I actually think, might have the most ones I don't like. Like, Halo Reach, has, in my mind, has, like, two good maps. Um, Halo Reach and... was kind of like when when Forge stuff kind of started getting implemented into matchmaking. Ugh, and it's I'm... been, like, a slow decline in quality of matchmaking maps since then. <laughs> and, yeah, and I'm just like, no, we don't want this. We want you to make a really good curated map. Like, I think back to, like, when Turf came out in Halo 2 as DLC... Mm-hmm. And I was and like I was like this map is so cool, yeah. You know, and like you you know like and you know same thing with several other times that has happened. But like now I'm just like whatever you know like I like every time I see like a forge map I get as my m- multiplayer map, I actually get like kind of disappointed. Well, I think it makes me the most sad in Halo Five because Halo Five generally has some amazing launch maps that you just never see in rotation because there's just that many Forge maps. It's That's actually a problem I also have with MCC. Is like, for whatever reason, when I play MCC in Big Team Battle, it's like I end up for Halo Three as an example. Like, it's almost always like Rats Nest Valhalla, mm-hmm. Rats Nest Valhalla, Rats Nest Valhalla. <laughs> occasionally when- standoff. It's funny we're talking about like forge maps that like in matchmaking that we dislike because going back to Halo Three being kind of the well we said Halo Reach was the steady decline but Halo Three Foundry was probably the first map that I ever played in the Halo game that I hated. And well, here's here's the thing about regular Foundry is horrible. You were pay you were paying for that map so you could forge it. Mm-hmm. That was the whole real. Re- it's just like how um, 
you want to talk about garbage maps, Halo 2 had uh, that unlockable map foundation that was literally only oh, yeah. good for, it was only good for zombies I that was it. About that map. <laughs> it was no because i play competitive halo 2 online occasionally and mm -hmm. that's and for some reason that's in their 4v4 matchmaking playlist and it's horrible it's horrible every time i get it i just like sigh uh, like oh lord i don't think anything will ever be worse than when uh, the doubles maps in Halo 5 changed to all Forge maps and they introduced these walls as a ranked doubles map. Oh and it was God. just like, what is this? This is, is Are we playing a Fiesta game mode right now? Are we playing ranked doubles? What's going on? Like, um, <laughs> Yeah, it was crazy. Bungie had a really good... Um, I will say Bungie did have a really good Forge map in reach that was kind of like lockout i forget its oh, name I, think I know which one you mean uh the one where you'd like there was like a grav lift uh, yeah like originally it didn't have that grav lift but yes there was a grav lift on the bottom that shot you up to the top and like it had like the these two elbows like it, yeah like that map was that map was really good uh was that called Uncaged or caged or something. Uh, yeah, I want to say it's the cage or something like something that. Like, something along those lines. I remember because they, I think the the like the the ranked version was called uncaged because it didn't have like certain barricades or something. But I think that's something along those lines. Anyways, I might just be making that up. But <laughs> anyways, we should probably get back to the questions because we just yes, went absolutely. on a huge tangent. <laughs> um, so I know, I know uh, you touched on. The fact that you're going to be starting uh, Reach on the 19th, you said, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes. Um, but when when did you actually start this journey? How how long has it been since you, you you've been doing this that this Halo kind of campaign been... stream? Two months, two and a half. Uh, Six. let me count. Uh, hold, I don't know. I need to count how many episodes we've done. Hold yeah, on. yeah, no problem. Uh, yeah. Hold on. So. Took us, I think it took us three weeks for Halo One. Um, hold on, let me go on the YouTube and <laughs> see. We're gonna get the on point answer right here. Uh, yeah, I gotta, I gotta figure it out for you. All right, so, all right, so, um, two, three, so three weeks for Halo One. <laughs> Uh, um, four weeks for Halo 2. Uh, two weeks for Halo 3, and two weeks for Halo 3 ODST. Wait, that's not that's not bad. <laughs> you can definitely see the uh, the difficulty levels there between the games, though. <laughs> oh my god! You got dude. three weeks for Halo C, and then Halo 2 is like four weeks. <laughs> Oh, Halo! It's literally the end of Halo Two that really does it, though. Like mm -hmm. the end of Halo Two just literally just had us just both so salty and mad. Like there's like twenty minute stretches where we're just like silent sighing. <laughs> um, ODST has like had like one level like that. It's the one where like you're you're escorting the Phantom. Like that was the one that was that and like the escort mission. Um, actually, fun fact about the escort mission, it briefly bugged for us, so it, like, teleported us briefly. <laughs> Damn. Um, yeah, uh, but yeah, so that means it's been two, six, it's been ten weeks already? Wow, okay. Time Jesus. flies, eh? <laughs> yeah, time, I guess time flies when you're having fun. Exactly. So in those ten weeks... Do you, do you have like a, a most enjoyable like part that's that's happened across all those Halo games that you've you've played so far? I got a couple. The first one is we have a we have a term now. Okay. Uh, like a universal term from when we're playing the game. It's called library rule. Right. Which what library rules are is okay. Don't worry about killing everything. Just keep moving. Just keep moving. Get to the next <laughs> checkpoint. Just just run. Just run and shoot, <laughs> run and shoot. So, like, you'll randomly hear during the Let's Play, like, oh, it's getting bad. 
library rules, library rules, library rules. You know, and that so that that I thought was funny. Um, then, uh, so for Halo Three ODST, uh, our friend, our, our fourth man was traveling, so we had a replacement from the community who who ODST is his favorite Halo by far. Mm-hmm. But he didn't tell us how bad his webcam was. Right. So we're like, and streaming live from a cave in Afghanistan, <laughs> you know, Parker York. And the best part is, is so we have an XSplit watermark on our stream because mm-hmm. that's the software we use. We uh, we use the freeware. Yeah. And the best part is, it he gets the Mike Wazowski treatment. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> because the watermark covers his face half the time. Oh, that's hilarious. Um, yeah, so Parker got a real bad during that ODST streams. Um, and then just in general, just reminiscing about and enjoying Halo. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I'm sure there's plenty of stuff that has happened during the, those runs that I, I look back at and they were fun, but those are things that come to mind. They sound uh... so. So, sound like very enjoyable moments, anyways. Especially the uh, the whole Mike Wazowski. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That like just, just like he like effort, and he points it out to us. He's like, "Oh, I'm getting the Mike Wazowski treatment." I'm like, and I have no idea what he's talking. About. I was like, "What?" <laughs> and then I I look over in the the window for the prep, and I'm like, "Oh, yeah, sorry, bud, we can't take that off." <laughs> I was like, how much would it cost to take it off? And I'm like, that's like a two hundred dollar license, bro. I'm not paying for that. <laughs> um, just to just to like not get Microsoft in for like a short stream. Yeah, for like that's a lot of money. Yeah, that's a lot of money for two weeks of content where you already look like you're tweeting you or you're recording in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, with Noble Six in, in the cave. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So um, I mean those those are great like great examples and obviously you're probably gonna have a, a lot more of you know a lot more of those as you play on towards the end of the, the great journey towards uh the end of Halo 5's campaign. But and Halo any... Wars where we're gonna do wars. Oh, we're doing Halo Wars as well. Okay, that's we're not cool. sure if we're doing wars on legendary yet though. We're we're Yeah, we're... probably I, I think that'll take probably a lot longer than we're probably just gonna do wars on normal like cowards. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think but, anyone would blame you for doing that. But well, if I go, on, well, what was your what was your question? No, I I, I was just gonna say, um, like going forward in the games that you haven't played yet, um, it, is there any moments that you're particularly looking forward to? Whether it's like in the actual games themselves, or or just to kind of relive playing the games or whatever. So I'm looking forward to um the people I'm streaming with's reaction to four. Because okay. um, Quinn played through four and he's well acquainted with it. Aaron played it only once. He doesn't really remember much of it. And Johnny skipped Ooh. it entirely. Oh, skipped it. No way. So, yeah. So I'm very curious to going to be their reaction to four because I really like four's campaign. What was um, my favorite campaign? I, don't um, think I, can say I, that well. I love its story. The Cortana chief subplot is the best. Mm-hmm. Um, which is another reason why five feels like a swift kick in the balls. Yeah. Um. Totally yeah. So, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to um, and then Aaron's never played five either. So, uh, because he just didn't have an Xbox One, like he bought a PS4 and was just like, no. Um. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I'm I'm curious to see their opinion on those. I'm mm-hmm. curious to see if I can do can break Halo Reach again. Right. So the last time I played Halo Reach, it was a four player co-op session with a bunch of friends. And mm-hmm. we were so we were we were playing through it so fast, we broke the checkpoint system. Oh really? Cause we because the game said checkpoint. Mm-hmm. And it said checkpoint again, but then we all died and it threw us back two checkpoints. It's oh. like the game wasn't registering because we were literally just Boom, boom, boom. Like, ahead kind of thing. Yeah, like we were just like going such a rapid pace, I guess. Um, but yeah, those are, and I don't know, man. Like, this is a weird group of guys. I'm sure there'll be something funny that happens during the, <laughs> like, the that's the thing. Like, it, you, you can, 
you get the you get the four of us in a room. Th this four in a room in particular, uh, there, there's almost always some weird or funny or interesting commentary to happen, even if it's not always necessarily about Halo. Mm, some shenanigans. Well, well, there you go. Have everyone who's listening, be sure to be sure to check out the streams for those shenanigans. I'm sure uh, I'll I'll probably be checking them out myself. So. Well, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, <laughs> moving on from Halo Five and 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 more Halo Infinite related stuff. Um, mm. Do you plan on playing Halo Infinite on Legendary and streaming it for your first playthrough, or do you plan on playing it on a different difficulty offline first and then doing the Halo Infinite stream? We're not fully sure yet. What it's looking like is it does look like we're both going to go through on normal, like the first weekend or first day or so, whip through it as quick as we can, and then do the let's stream. Mm -hmm. But we're not 100% sure about that. Yeah. That's kind of the route we'd like to go, just because, um, you know, unfortunately, it's probably going to come out during my busy season at work. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, I, I will already be stretched thin for time. So what might end up happening is it like it it's you know like it, it, it's kind of a bummer because you know we we have this Halo audience that we like want to go through the game with them yeah but like for our own personal health and like to create better content in all honesty because because the problem when you let's play a game that you've never played before as I learned working on other LPs in the past. Is like during cutscenes, during a lot of moments, you just go quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, and part of the reason why we can do st running commentary through the Halos is because we've played them so many times. It's just like, oh, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, th you know, so as much as like I'd want to do that first playthrough with an audience and with the crowd, uh, but like it's like, okay, well, I don't want to run myself ragged at work with mm -hmm. work, and also it, it's. It's probably better for the audience that we play through the regular LP, or we play through it on normal, and then do the legendary LP with the four of us. Yeah. Um, when the game is out, do you know if they've confirmed four player co op for the online? Uh, I retweeted something regarding that the other day. Let me see if I can find the retweet because it was literally a couple of days ago. Um. Um. Do do do! I retweet so much stuff. But yeah, no, I get, I, I get, uh, what, what oh, no, I, I just pulled, I just pulled up is two player. Uh, so it looks like Halo two, Infinite's campaign is two player local, split screen, and four player online. So yeah, we'll that's be, what I'm reading from Jerry. Yep, Hawk. yep, yep. Kyle Wheelock is what the uh, who wrote this article oh, for okay. Screen Rant. Well, I'm I'm looking at probably the tweet that they wrote the article on. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, same info, different places. Um, but yeah, no, uh, I, get, I, I get exactly what you mean about the whole, like, you know, wanting to play it, kind of finding the time to stream it and stuff like that. I'm kind of having that dilemma right now with Halo Infinite and, and, and thinking so far ahead as to do I want my, do, do I want to stream my first playthrough or do I just want to experience it myself without feeling like I kind of have to. I, I, have attention elsewhere, you know what I mean? You know, I, I mean, just... you're 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 always looking at the freaking chat and you know, and then Twitter and everything in between is going yeah. off, and it's you know, versus like, well, I mean, that's why I stopped doing day one game streams. Mm -hmm. Like, I used to do tons of day one game streams, and just like, I you know, like I, I'm gonna be honest with you, like I enjoyed playing God of War with like my stream partner at the time. Yeah, it was a fun time to do it with the chat. But like I probably would have enjoyed it more just like you know, would have enjoyed it as much like by myself playing it all in one sitting mm -hmm. over the course of a weekend in a dark room. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um you know, and then say so, so yeah, like I'll probably, you know, let's assuming it comes out, let's say you know what? What's the rumor for that game? Like November. November fifteenth is the rumor. So let's say it comes out on that Monday. Like, I like I'll probably play what I can during my work week. Will probably be like an hour or two a day, and mm -hmm. then like 
that Friday night, play, you know, binge eight straight hours of it, you know, and then, you know, call it a Respect day. Mind. Yeah, like, it's, it's... I'll just book know. the week off work. <laughs> well, I, dude, I, so I can't. It's a blackout period. So oh, really? what, 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 I do, uh, what I do professionally is I sell Medicare insurance. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, and, that's, uh, and that is the um, open enrollment period. Mm-hmm. So it's like all hands on deck, a minimum 48-hour weeks. Um, like you're making stupid money because of all the overtime and commissions you're making. Yeah, but it, like, but like, it means like for six weeks of the year, you kind of give up having a personal life. Honestly, like, I don't even know if I'll be able to get it off myself because by the time November rolls around, hopefully, I'll still be at the job that I'm going into uh, <laughs> then. Um, but it's an Xbox game studio, so. I feel like everyone is going to be wanting the week off Halo Infinite, though. <laughs> so I, I got to play it. I got to play it by the books, I guess, and and just uh... Uh, yeah, like like you know, like it 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 kind of bums me out. Like uh, you know, like I've had this is my like sixth year in this industry. It makes me miss like uh, it makes me miss like caregiving and like writing about games where like getting time off was just like all right, I'm out. Yeah. You know, like um, uh, anyway, yeah. So that that's it. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm super excited. I I, I can't wait. I, I I I know. I'm hoping at E3 they do a big meaty showcase. Um, I'm hoping so as well. Yeah, yeah I'm nice. I'm bummed. There's not a physical E3. Uh, because Babe. I'd love to. You know, <laughs> Well, I should say I'm bummed if it was healthy to go to a physical E3. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah. Like I'm bummed that there's not a healthy physical E3 because, as exhausting as that show is to report on, like I remember when Halo Five was coming out and I got to play that. Like I had like my two appointments to go play that and had a great time and you know got to play Halo Four before it came out at PAX. Um, Finally, someone uh, that I can speak to about attending E3. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yo, bro! Do you want to talk about how exhausting E3 is? It, it's more exhausting than what anyone who ever wants to go realizes. <laughs> well, yeah, like if you're working it, yeah, no, it's yeah. The, it's like it, especially because like if you're like us, like a good group of the people we worked with, you're probably hung over for at least a quarter of it. <laughs> uh, so, like, yeah, like, oh my god. It was just tiring walking around the show floor, like even for just three days, like getting there when it opens and leaving when it closes. And then you, you don't realize how much you've walked in the day until you get back to wherever you're staying and you sit down and your legs just turn off. <laughs> right. And then you need to do two hours of podcasting and write whatever articles you need to write. Yeah. The, the yeah. writing part is always the hardest part, even though that's why you're there. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like, w- I was so happy the year that it was. It was the last year I did E three when they're like, yeah, we only want written articles for the for the impressions. Mm-hmm. Everything else we want either camera or audio interviews, or on camera audio interviews or uh, podcasts. Also, we've hired a offsite editor to just. Just upload everything the second that you have good internet, and then, and then just you know start me go go handle go get more interviews, go do a podcast. I was just like, oh my god, thank god, this Sounds is so like easy. Because I just had to uh, go there, do all like back to back like <laughs> interviews for the first two days, and the third day was the day I actually got to do what I wanted, and it was uh, just writing. And writing and writing and writing. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I, think I, I spent I, I most rem- of my time in the uh, media suite more than in my hotel. I think. <laughs> I I remember my first E three, which was like literally get up, get dressed, eat, etc. Go to show floor, work, do the show floor all day, get interviews, get all this different stuff. Go to the media room, get as much as you can in the media room. Sit in traffic for an hour to get back to your hotel. <laughs> go to hotel write everything you can get the podcast done okay now take an uber back to like 
you know, whatever E3 event you're going to go do that night or party or whatever it is, Mm -hmm. or, you know, just go schmooze people at the JW Marriott. (laughs) Um, Dude, no, I actually, I had a, like, let me tell you, uh, if if you want, like, an amazing, uh, let me tell you, it's way too long for this show because it's it's like a 30 minute to hour long story. Uh my E3 2017, let me tell you man, was bananas. <laughs> it was the most okay, like I was leading our like team for it that year. Mm-hmm. Um because at that point I was like the most senior uh senior writer and um you know, on camera guy, so like okay, we're going to have a team of 3, you're going to lead it, etc. and just like Every possible crazy thing that could happen happened. And the thing, because my policy was like, as long as you get the work done and it's quality work and you're in places on time, I don't care what you do in your free time. If you're doing something stupid or bad, don't mention you're from our website. (laughs) Otherwise, like, otherwise, if you want to go flirt with girls, go flirt with girls. If you want to go drink, go drink. I don't care. uh, I remember that. I went to this like alien world party uh, mm-hmm. in the 2017 uh, E3, and like it was just like free alcohol, but they had these donuts that had like syringes in that you could squirt like I don't know, it was like alcohol into the donuts and then eat the donuts, and of I course, got um... so wasted. I was like, and I and this place was like in the middle of nowhere, like just in the middle of Los Angeles, like nowhere near my hotel. I yeah, remember. as as all E three parties are. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, um, like my phone was like dying, which is never good when you're out in another country on your own. And, all right, let um, me, well, the rookie mistake, sir. Go yeah. on. <laughs> and um, I remember I was just like these Ubers. The the Uber like didn't come to pick me up. It, it like said it arrived, but it didn't. So I was just like everyone else was leaving. The the place was locking up. I was like, I, I it's like one o'clock in the morning. I'm like, I have no idea where I'm going. And uh, the the like organizer of the event comes over to me. He's like, Yo, what's what's up? And I'm like, Yeah, I literally have no way of going back to my hotel. They were just like, Oh yeah, yeah, you know, I'll take you back. And like, you could have gotten just... murdered. That dude uh, could have just thrown you in a van and been like, <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take uh, yeah. you out to Bakersfield and like. <laughs> throw you in a ditch i feel like i could tell like you said there's there's an hour plus easy worth of stories about about e3 shenanigans but we should pro- probably ask the last question of the halo the halo q a which is my way yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everyone else listening okay. is just like where the halo questions are got <laughs> <laughs> gotta have you on the podcast one week oh yeah absolutely oh for sure anyway go on uh, well, the last question, funnily enough, it, it, it's not really Halo themed. It's uh, it's more themed towards uh, yourself and and, and your uh, Twitch channel and, and stream and whatnot. Um, for those wanting to find your let's streams or any uh, you know videos or anything like that related to the the Halo content, where should they go? So that would be um, so that would be twitch.tv slash Super Gamecraft. That is with a K. Some people do it with a C and they end up in a weird place. <laughs> uh, so, yes, that is twitch.tv slash supergamecraft. Just like you would also look up uh, supergamecraft on YouTube. Uh, the the what, the name of the Halo Let's Play in particular is Halo We Love You. Mm-hmm. So, there. yep. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and that's, that's where you'd find the Halo content. Uh, if you're Looking so that'd be twitch.tv slash super gamecraft, YouTube Super Gamecraft, Halo, we love you. If you're looking for our podcasts on iTunes and Spotify, it is Super Gamecast, once again with a K two. Awesome. So Yep. Sweet. And if for whatever reason you're struggling to find any of those, as always, the links will be in the description. If you're listening to this, then you're on YouTube, so check the description. All the links will be in there. Um, and yeah, that 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 pretty much closes closes things off. Um, so yeah, thanks very much for for, for popping on and uh, you know answering some questions and going on massive tangents with me and 
<laughs> talking about all sorts of stuff that isn't related to Halo. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, dude. Oh, Thank fun. you. It was it was a great time. I uh, hope some of your audience comes over and likes our stuff. Um, you know, Thank obviously, you. I, I I hope some of our audience comes checks out your stuff. You know, especially with like how many Halo marks we have in our community. So, <laughs> hopefully, yeah. hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah, hopefully, we can get uh, a bit of overlap there. Yeah. Nope. Absolutely. And and you want, yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you very yeah, much. No problem at all. And thanks to everyone who's been listening uh, all this time. If you've made it this far, uh, I hope you've enjoyed the uh, the Q and A. If you want to hear more Q and As like this, be sure to click the subscribe button and uh, check out the other Q and As that we've got on our YouTube channel. If you want to check out the website for any of the written versions of any Q and As or any spotlight pieces, you can just go over to HaloSpotlight.com. Nice and easy. Uh, if you want updates on the pieces we're going to be posting or any updates regarding the website, you can check out our Twitter account, which is Halos underscore Spotlight. If you want to see me or any Halo discussions that I post, you can check me out on Twitter, which is Writing underscore Spartan. Thanks again, everyone, for listening, and I will see you all in the next Q&A.